Hello YouTube. So here we are. Um, what we're trying to do is get bearings, ball bearings, in this on each robot track axle because it's just so much better than the rusty axles that you typically end up extricating. So here's the bearings. They're not expensive. You get a full pack of eight, $16.99 on Amazon, and there's there's enough to do one whole robot because you've got four axles, you got eight bearings. That's what I ordered. That's what I'm using in the video is that right there. Okay, so I prepped the brackets. I had to cut off these extra mounting flanges that they had on the snowblower. So I used the Milwaukee Porta Band, uh, kind of set it up as a stand. I'm going to build a better stand eventually, but it worked for now. I got those brackets all prepped. And here's some video of uh, getting the axles loose. Some of the axles come right out of the plastic wheels, no problem. But some of them are so rusted in that it can be it can be quite a challenge to get some of these axles out. And uh, with a little bit of work and perseverance and uh, you know some of the right tools like a hydraulic jack you got to really be careful with the hydraulic jack not to bust or crack the plastic wheels you got to support it correctly and you, you got to really watch what you're doing there's a lot of rust on these axles okay with the axles extricated it's time to figure out where to and drill the, when I put these on here and look at the rust marks to see where it was adjusted it's basically the center of this of this oblong so if I choose that center spot you know it should be pretty good well it wasn't good because after I did all the work of drilling out those holes I even had to oblong one hole on each bracket and even then it was very difficult to get the axles to fit. I got very concerned about the accuracy and the alignment of them, and I started feeling like I was making a lot of the same mistakes I had made on my first robot, and I changed my mind completely on the design, and more about that later. But you can see how far off the alignment was and um, I eventually measured it and it looked to be about 30 centimeters center to center on those axles and that was way off the uh, 30 centimeters is accurate but this what I had done was way off regardless of the design that you choose you're gonna need a good 1 and 3 8 drill bit to make the correct size holes for those press fit flange bearings. You don't have to undersize it. You can get a bit for $50 um, or you can spend more. You can spend, you know, $140, $150. Um, I think I spent somewhere around $60 or $70 at, uh, I think I, I bought it at Wholesale Tool, but it was so many years ago I don't remember. So I just want to show what it was like to use a large one three eighths drill bit like that in these brackets um, it was a lot of work very slow going very catchy very chattery it, it was really difficult time consuming <laughs> And it was especially bad when I was drilling out those ovals, the, the slide adjustment ends. That was really catchy and very difficult to drill those out. Where it's going to go, that's And in spite of making every effort to get both brackets to match each other, it still just was very difficult to get 
the accuracy. You can see in, in the one that this, the hole isn't even in the center of the other matching bracket. And so I had to really force the bit off center. It was very difficult to get the holes to match. And, and in the end, they didn't. They were off by a couple of millimeters. On the other set of brackets, I may try one of these step bits just to see if it isn't a completely different experience. I, I don't know. Um, but it was an idea I had. I have not tried it yet. I don't own that bit yet. Um, just an idea. I wanted to uh, get that in this video also, that that may be an option for somebody. Much less expensive. Okay, so on to what I have decided to do. These, this is half inch cold rolled steel. Cold rolled is stronger than hot rolled and uh, I'm putting the layout die cam on it and I'm going to lay out the position for the holes and I'm going to center punch, center drill, and then use progressively larger size drill bits. And what I found out through careful measuring is, is that the axles are 30 centimeters on center. It, it was really difficult to come to that conclusion because I had come to a measurement of 29 and a half centimeters, but I realized I think it was 30 centimeters. I tried that and I, I test fit it and I got it. So 30 centimeters is what we're laying out here. And I'm starting by drilling a center, a finding center, drilling a center hole, and I'm bolting two pieces together because both sides of the track axle brackets have to match. These pieces of steel are the size that they are because they were just, um, well not scraps, but they were they were, uh, what are they, 60 cents a pound at uh, discount steel. I don't know what they call it. It's, it's not drop. It's not scrap. It's just uh, odds and ends, miscellaneous, whatever. So it's half inch thick. It's, it's cutouts from a, from a laser CNC is what it is. So they had cut these out. And, uh, and then they put all these cutout pieces in a bin. And, and then they're sold for 60 cents a pound. And I had I had bought a bunch of these, and um, that's why that piece of steel was chosen, and that's why it's the dimensions that it is. And here we can see from 10 centimeters all the way over to 40 centimeters, where our marks are right on. So that's 30 centimeters center to center on the axles, and that's where we're going to drill. And um, I'll show the uh, and there's the other backer piece or the other side to the track. And then that's this is one of the assemblies. So it's two pieces bolted together so that the holes absolutely line up, and then it's drilled that way in the press. I just want to show some video of the drilling process on this cold rolled steel versus drilling out the brackets. You, you'll see that when you choose to fabricate something from scratch, it actually is easier than trying to reuse those old, those, well, not old, but the original thin brackets. Um, this was actually less time consuming, um, far less chatter, and um, a far more accurate end result. And, and they're stronger than the other brackets. So I'm just showing that, you know, I stepped through with a center drill, a quarter inch bit, half inch bit. Um, I don't remember what this size of bit is. There were two sizes before I got to one and three eighths. This is just one of the intermediate bits. I have a, a, several of these larger bits. Much smoother process. And if you don't do the intermediate steps and you go right from half inch to the one and three eighths, you can expect a lot of chatter 
and in, in, in a very difficult process just like this. But after I went through as many intermediate steps as I had drill bits for and was careful to line it up, um, the drilling process was much better, much less chatter. Still a challenge, but better. Much better results. So then I used a one inch uh, socket, pressed the bearings back out of the brackets that I no longer wanted to use, and put the bearings into the new brackets that we are going to be using. And I use the drill press as all kind of an arbor press. It's definitely not a best practice. You can see the flex in the, in the bed on the drill press, and I had to tap it in that last little bit but we got those bearings pressed in. We are about to find out if it is exactly 30 centimeters. Well, that fit easily. My original robot, there's more play in it than this. So this is better than my original. Another thing I like about having these thicker plates is that these bearings fit in there very perpendicular and I can tell there's no binding on the bearing. This is a really good fit. That's going to conclude this video about the ball bearing upgrade saga. And next we're going to go into design considerations, layout, and how I'm going to approach the design. So please subscribe, click the bell. And thank you for watching and stay tuned.